time for Taste Appeal and a New Year's Eve bash isn't complete without an array of tantalizing appetizer recipes. So today we have Chef Bill Collins. He's a personal chef and he's joining us with some easy and inexpensive appetizer ideas. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having Great me. Great to have you here. The last day of 2012. It's, I know. It's terrific. Good yeah. to Exciting. be with you. Thank Happy you. early New Year's. And to you. So, so we're making cheese straws. Yes, we're going to start with cheese straws. Now you can buy cheese straws for about three, four, five dollars, or you can make them for about a dollar fifty. And they're really, really good. They're so simple. About five ingredients. Now the recipe that I wrote up for today, and it's on the uh, Mass Appeal website, calls for using a food processor. But you don't have to use a food processor. I'm going to show you how to do it. On the off chance you might not have one in your kitchen. Yeah, I don't actually don't have one, so this is good. Then I want to make these at home. Can I try they're so stuff? good. I'm grab grab one. One. <laughs> Sorry, we're digging in. I can't have him eat it and me not I try. I don't really care how to All make them. All I can smell is cheese. So. I know they're really good. So the key component is is cheddar cheese. Now you can buy cheddar cheese already grated. I can see by your eyes that you really like these. Uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> you can buy the cheddar cheese already grated, mm -hmm. or you can just grate your own cheese. It's a quarter of a pound. It's really fast and easy. And the advantage of doing it yourself is you get maybe a different flavor cheddar or a sharp or cheddar if you like that. And it's probably a little cheaper when you can buy a block of cheese. It right? really is. It's the cheapest way to go. So uh, I've already mixed up. I've got some flour, a little cayenne pepper, just a little. As you it see, it's not. Like, yeah. it's got a little I was bit just of thinking, I think I have a little. I'm going to need another one. Just really a little know. bite and a little salt. Mm. And that goes in. And the grated cheese goes in. I just got goosebumps because they're so good. Oh, I thank you. I don't think I'm cold. It's a unique <laughs> feeling to get. No, it, really, it really is so tasty. Okay. And, so really, then, and you're really, you're just mixing it all up. So you don't need the food processor. You don't like need you the said. food processor. It'll it'll uh, chop up the cheese a little bit more, but as you can tell, it's perfectly fine without. Hmm. Now I'm going to put in just uh, not even two tablespoons of milk, and that's what's just going to bind the whole thing together. So that's all you need to get it to come together. Yep. Yep. Because what what's happening is, as you can see, it's all coming together, and just a bit. Does it have to be a certain um, kind of milk that you recommend? I use whole milk. You can use skim okay. milk if you want, or a mm -hmm. low-fat milk, and. I just kind of coming together like that and just kind of move it move it around. Mm -hmm. And now the big thing that I forgot to bring over here, I left in the fridge, is, I'll the, get it for you. is the butter. Okay, and let's it's get chopped it. up in there. I'm wondering why isn't this coming together? Oh, because so that's the other combined. That, that's the key thing, thing the gives it its good. richness. Thank okay. you, Ashley. No problem. And so this looks like a, uh, a bunch of butter. Uh, well, actually, it's not that much. It's three quarters of a, of a, of a stick. Which isn't all that much, and that what you see over there yeah. is less than this one half right here. of the. Yeah, that one there uh -huh. is less than a, a full recipe. Mm. So really, so they are so good. Are they? They're just the easiest thing in the world. So what it, I'm doing is I'm bringing the whole thing together like this, and you can see it's already starting to stick together. Did you have to let the butter melt? I mean, obviously we just took it out of the fridge, but was it no? Because actually, at all, no, or? you don't want to soften. You actually do want it cold. So you okay. don't have to do one of these. Oops, I forgot to leave the butter out of softener or play with the microwave. Well, that's probably oven. why it was still in the fridge, right? Exactly. Yeah, I popped <laughs> it in there. Yep, because <laughs> it all happens. These lights melt things yeah. Yeah. That's cool. right. So as you can see, it, it's coming together really nicely, and as as I clump it together, I'm going to break it up just a little bit more because you really want it just like you know large sand pieces. And so I'm going to take some out here, and you see you can do this in two batches. And the reason you want to do it in two batches is unless you've got a convection oven, uh, you want to put one rack in the oven uh, at a time. If you put in two, the bottom one will get uh, uh, too 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 burned okay, or it won't so, cook yeah, enough. So, so it's really just a technique thing. Now, Bill, I've got to ask you this because I've, I've wondered it for years. I don't know why I've never asked anybody. Yes. What's the difference between what the, the bake setting and the convection setting on your oven? What a convection does is it's got a little fan in back, and so it takes away hot spots. <clears throat> so just as I talked about, you don't want something in the bottom oven. Think of cookies. And when you go to uh, make some uh, cookies, you can only do one tray at a time because the bottom one uh, will burn and the top one won't cook all the way through. Well, the advantage of convection is the fan evenly circulates the heat. So you can put three trays of cookies in if you want. And so okay. if you're doing something like this, uh, for New Year's, you can put both racks in at so once. If I'm making one item, I can just keep it on regular bake. If I'm making multiples, I should throw it on convection? Well, uh, convection is going to go faster for you anyway. Okay. And so I always use convection at home, hmm. uh, or if a, if a client it. has right. convection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a lot of people have it, they're afraid of it because they don't know how to use it. Huh, did not know that. So now I'm rolling this out now because the, the beauty of live television is I should have beat this up a little bit more in there because <laughs> the butter's still a little bit big. So I'm going to walk us through what this would be had I actually <laughs> had, had it I, been right. Had it been right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, and in the so, these were right. And these the beauty of live TV, I, I think it's so fun. It is fun. Mm -hmm. So you got to really, just, yeah, it, exactly. make it work, right? So, yep. Now, I bought one of these new little. 
uh, pastry wheels. I've never seen one with two little heads on it, but two different ones. Do you see how you got that crinkle cut over there on those? Yeah, right about here. And that's by using the crinkle cut on a pastry wheel. And so you just kind of cut along like that. Now, say you don't have this, I mean it costs you know, $4.95, but say you don't have one, you can use anything from a knife to a straight edge like a pastry uh, scraper or anything that you want and then just pick it up and go any width. You can make it wider, longer, shorter, cut it in half and it really is easy that way. So. Mm -hmm. And you can make, like these are pretty, you made them pretty thick. Yes, I did. you can make little you can small make the, straws you can, if you wanted to. You can make them narrow, you can make them wide. That's the great thing about this, you can make them any shape you want. Mm -hmm. You can't make them too long because they're going to break. But you can make right. little squares, you can do animal cutouts, anything oh, you yeah. want. Cool. So, so it really is, it's very, cre very versatile and very easy. So now how long do you bake them for and at what temperature? Those are going to bake at 350 for about, uh, give or take, 15 minutes. And then you cool them for about 15 minutes you know, on the pan and mm -hmm. then you're done. And it's that easy. So you saw the five ingredients, mix it up by hand or in the food processor. Really make sure it's nice Ma and Make sure yeah. you don't have big uh, hunks of butter like uh, I did with that I one. I love butter. So <laughs> actually, these are probably hitting the spot for me. Like these. That's going to be well, very These will rich. be all mine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll eat all these. You <laughs> can eat all those. That's right. We can have the raw ones. And it really is, it's that simple. And the great thing is, you can, no matter how many you make, they're all going to be gone. Everybody just loves well, these. Well, clearly. I can attest to that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be in five. Thank you so much, Jeff. We'll be back with you in a bit to make another delicious recipe. Thanks so much. Whether you're entertaining a crowd or simply just ringing the New Year's with close friends, we have got recipes to offer you that won't break the bank. Chef Bill Collins is a personal chef, and he joins us with some easy, inexpensive appetizer ideas. Always nice to be with you, Chef Bill. Good to have you. We made these uh, cheese straws earlier, which right we cannot there. stop eating because oh, well, they're so good. I'll, I'll make some more of them. My mm. count's up to seven now. I've eaten seven Actually, of Actually, it's been eight, but I don't want to. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, it's been eight. They're that good. So now we're making... We're doing dates stuffed with gorgonzola cheese, goat cheese, and bacon. The bacon's mm. already cooked. And uh, we just start with some dates. So you really, you just have those four ingredients, and that's it. And it's very simple and easy to do. The hardest or the longest part is actually just taking the pit out of the date. So what you want to do is uh, cut lengthwise. You don't want to cut all the way through. Just split it open and see the pit comes right out. Can I try one of these? Oh sure, absolutely. All right, what is see. the what is the flavor of a date? Would you say it, it's sweet? Because uh, it is a dried fruit. Now, uh, actually, uh, that's one way to do it. I hope your thumbs are there when you're done. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should show up the safe way to do it. Let me show you the safe way to do it. <laughs> is kind of hold the knife like this, you know, very loosely in your hand. You want the tip. Now, just gently, because it's very soft. You don't want to go real quickly because you will cut your thumb off. But gently pull the knife down like that. See, so just the tip. Oh, okay. And, and out comes the pit. It's very easy, and pits are available. Uh, pits. Let me try it again. Dates are dates available. available. You can buy pits you in every market. Pits too. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever dates are sold. Yes, <laughs> a, and they're uh, just su supermarkets everywhere. And uh, <laughs> these are uh, medjool dates, which are a very flavorful, popular date. You can find them everywhere. So just take a little bit of goat cheese. And now, this recipe calls for gorgonzola cheese, but you can also go with any kind of blue cheese you want. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to specifically be gorgonzola. And uh, the bacon, which I've already uh, cooked. And so you're just going to mix them just up. Just crumble it. Just crumble cr just, You break it all together. Now, the gorgonzola sometimes puts up a bit of a fight because mm -hmm. it's a little bit firmer. But you want to mash all of this stuff together. Kind of like that butter when we make in cheese straws, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, conversely, though, could you warm up the cheese? Uh, you or can. You can leave it out for a bit. You know, gorgonzolas uh, tend to be sometimes a little bit firmer than some of the other blue cheeses. But as you can see, this, this just came out of the fridge, and it breaks up very quickly. Yeah. Huh. It's, it's, so it's very easy that way. I'm going to hand you a... No, I actually, two, one or two, we just broke open. Oh, okay. So really what you do is you just take some of the uh, the mixture and you just put it in just a little bit and you close it up. I'm going to try cutting one open. Yeah. Sure. It's, well, watch your thumbs. Yep. Right. You, you'll need those for the next segment, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. I heard that. Thumbs, we do our thumb wrestling segment. Ex later. Exactly. We're not it, doing a thumb wrestling it's, segment. It's not a New Year's tradition. No. So really, what you do is, and you, you can stuff them as much or as little as you want. And uh, this is just such a great fasting. You can do these ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You can. It's um, uh, really quick, huh? You, oh yeah, it, it's it's that quick. Mm -hmm. Do you want? You, sure. You want to get messy yeah. and, and do one? Uh, now. Yes. Are yes, these I do. similar to prunes in their flavor? Uh, no, they're actually I think a little bit sweeter than prunes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the advantage of these are these are just the perfect shape, uh, and actually they're a bit denser 
And so prunes, I think, might just break apart. You can try it with a prune. I think a prune will be very, very popular. And actually, they believe it or not, they've changed the name of prunes to now dried plums because people are scared of prunes, and you know, prunes have a funny connotation. Mm -hmm. But uh, dried plums, uh, you can find them in recipes all over the place, in cookies and everything. Oh. And those actually would work quite well, but I think they might be fall a little mushroom and fall apart okay. a bit. And the um, uh, the dates are really uh, firm enough to hold up, even if you leave them in the oven for a few minutes too long. They're very um, uh, forgiving because it calls for just five minutes in the oven. If you leave them in for 10 minutes because your party's going on, you go, oops, I forgot. They're going to be perfectly fine. Okay. So they uh, uh, they last. Uh, and, and also, you don't have to eat them screaming hot. Uh, if they sit out for a while, that's fine too because all the flavors have melded together exactly. from being in the oven. So, so about five or 10 minutes in the oven at what temperature? 350. Okay. That's universal 350 temperature. 350 is a good, yeah. 350 is kind of when a in doubt, 350. When, when in doubt, 350. <laughs> and as you can see how easy it is, and yeah. you can do these way ahead of time. And what I like to do, I like to get these disposable uh, sheet pans because you can wash them up or if they get too messy, uh, you can throw them out. But even better, you can do smaller quantities. So if you want, if you are in the kitchen a bit, you can uh, just do 10, 12 or 20 at a time. That's Instead smart. of filling up a whole sheet pan, they take up less room in the counter because if you're having a party, you might have a whole bunch of stuff out. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility for the party. And what else are those good for, Chef Bill? Uh, the little sheet pans? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I call those the uh, fiscal cliff. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> New Year's noisemaker, you bang it together. <laughs> if you can't afford any more, if you can't afford a sled, maker. it's cold out, they, you go sledding on exactly. those. They actually make a lot of noise. That's they a did. great they, idea they, that they, they yeah, quite a bit of noise. I actually thought it would be a funny idea to do that earlier, but we, we convinced her against it. And especially, you know, if you have a young cool. child, that is going to be their uh, New Year's news, uh, noisemaker. I'm going to keep going. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, right. keep going, yeah. So you can see how fast and easy they are. And like I said, you could do these a day ahead. And so when the time comes, your guests arrive, just pop them in the oven. I can't wait to try one. Now, those over here, that's the traditional product. That's what they look like. And that's a great thing. Yeah, those are out of the oven. And the great thing is if you were to eat one of these, it's all cooked. So it's not like you're eating raw bacon. You cook the bacon ahead of time right, and you chop cooked. it up. So it, it's really easy. Nothing's Just that, that's softer and the flavors have had a chance to meld together. So it's, it's really quite uh, so simple so to do. So 350, 5 to 10 minutes. Yep. There we go. And you'll notice also, uh, I forgot to do a, a garnish before. And it's always nice to garnish the plate. Uh, and so just a couple slices of uh, lemon wheels just to give it a nice little uh, yeah. oof of a look. And you're all set to celebrate the new year. Happy New Year, Chef Bill. Happy, Happy New Year. New Year. Oh, messy hands. We'll cheese hands. <laughs> I just got we'll cheese hands. We'll use our noise makers after. Bill. Well, for these recipes and more, you can visit us online at mymassivefield.com. Enjoy one of these. I know we do. Very good.